uh, with cheers and happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. I'm dressed in green, drinking a classic Guinness Extra Stout, which was uh, most of us of a certain age, our first uh, introduction to a stout. It was mine, so I have a soft spot for this beer as my the picture of a bar behind me says Guinness, <laughs> which is why I picked that particular backdrop. And they put that uh, beer back there, and I want to read just a little bit from their website to give you an idea about this classic. Get us extra style. Beer tasting notes, aroma, medium and balance, a roast character of subtle fermentation, fruitiness. That's interesting because that's relatively new to their description. A perfect rounded flavor for bitter and sweet palate, smooth with a slight bite, leading to a dry finish, 5.6%. Appearance distinctively black, full body liquid with a rich creamy head. Yes, it did pour that way. Oops, I went too far. Well, biscuits and gravy. Here we go. Let me come there. Back. Okay. Uh, as deep as Guinness Extra Stout's color and taste. Color. Okay, one more time. Take two. As deep as Guinness Extra Stout's color is its taste. Crisp barley cuts through hops. A bite draws you in. Bold flavors linger. Bitter, merry, sweet. A rich, refreshing taste. Brewed with scale built to last. They have changed this description quite a bit over the years because I remember reading many, many moon ago that they used a small percentage of soured beer. That's how they had that, that taste that no other stout could achieve. Now, it doesn't say that anymore, so I don't know if it's made differently than it once was, but they have changed their description. You didn't used to see fruit notes describe a stout, but I think it's more of what's been, you know, with, with today's lexicon of, of craft beer, everything has to taste like fruit in some way. But you do feel that those big roasted malt notes in a great big way. Uh, uh, the malts may impart notes of, of chocolate and coffee as well, which are descriptors you used to see in, in uh, depicting stouts and not so much fruitiness. Just brews, beers like this don't typically leave fruity esters behind. So I picked this up for a couple of reasons. One is St. Patrick's. I felt like... Uh, I've struggled the last five years. Um, those of you that know me know that the last five years have been difficult for my wife and I. We lost our son to cancer five years ago. Uh, ooh, five years ago on April 23rd. So this is it, this time of year is difficult uh, because St. Patrick's Day was a very uh, integral part of our, our, our family traditions. Um, we made a big deal out of it. When the kids were little, the leprechaun would visit... <laughs> So what the leprechaun would do is he'd come into the house and he'd scatter potatoes around and he would usually leave some uh, some chocolate gold coins around and one treat for each of the kids, you know, one toy typically or, or something that they wanted. And so that's what the leprechaun did. And then we would watch uh, the two movies that we, we watched uh, about every year where it was Luck of the Irish and Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Uh, and then, you know, we would, uh, of course, I would I would drink uh, uh, beer and, and uh, some Irish whiskey as well. But uh, we would do other things as well. Food has always been a big part of all of our traditions. Uh, I would traditionally do the, you know, the Irish-American corned beef and cabbage. But as we got older and started watching, you know, Food Network and other things and, you know, the Internet, we would see other Irish recipes. My wife would, would almost always make an Irish soda bread, which she hasn't been able to do in five years. And it's just because it's very difficult for her. Um, and, but anyway, th through that time, we I, I learned about coal can. I didn't grow up eating it, but I learned about it. So I started making it when Seamus was probably about, uh, I don't know, five or six. Uh, and he just loved it. So I made it every year since then. And, and, and uh, made it, I think I made it a couple years ago. I don't think I made it last year. Um, you know, trying to, you know, well, I don't know, trying to do what I think you want me to do, I suppose. But I, I think I'm going to try to make it this year. I bought the ingredients to do so. Uh, I do have a, a, a core beef that I'm going to do, as well as an American version of an Irish stew. I'm using pork uh, instead of lamb. I know it is traditional to use lamb. I'm not a big lamb fan. So I've got the core beef, got the lamb, and I'll, I will make some coal cannon. Uh, in honor of Seamus at some point, but I wanted to start, as far as the beer is concerned, with, the, again, tradition. This is the first stout I ever had. I remember thinking, it used to, they used to say it was 6-2%, but I don't know, again, 
things seem to have changed a lot over the years. Now it's five six. I, again, I don't know if the beer's changed. I've talked for five minutes and I haven't taken a drink, so I'm going to take one now. Ah. Oh mercy, that is not bad at all. Actually, it's pretty good. A Guinness, it always cracks me up when I hear non-craft drinkers describe Guinness as thick and oil-like. Uh, and, and I drink this now thinking, it isn't that heavy, man. <laughs> but I, I think it's more reputation. I, I'd almost bet that almost all those folks, are, or I would say, I'm going to guess about 70% of those people that describe Guinness as oil or thick have actually never even drank it. But that is their impression. You know, that is what they've heard. It's been passed down over the years. Because I remember hearing it as a kid. But this ain't that thick, man. It's it's medium bodied. Uh, but the reason the big stout, especially the Guinness Draft, that's only 4.2%, can achieve the body that it has and, and stay relatively low in alcohol is that they use unfermentable malts and maltodextrin. That, that give you that body without that extra alcohol. But I love, I, I do enjoy this. Actually, I haven't had the, the, the traditional Guinness Extra Stat quite some time in favor of the newer or, you know, what's been imported over the last few years. You know, the first, the Guinness FES is, oh, just brilliant. Uh, last year I had the Antwerpen that was really nice. Uh, 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 late in 2017, I had the 200th anniversary stat. That was that was very nice as well. So anyway, the, the point being is that, that I think this traditional beer seems to get overlooked. But drinking it now, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, craft beer geeks tend to really slam Guinness as a horrible beer. They're wrong. And, and in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on limb again. It's 90% of those people that say that. Are only saying it because they've heard somebody else say it. Because it is one of those, you know, new old beer geek things to say to hammer somebody else. This really is a nice beer. It is what it is, man. You know, accept it for what it is. There are nice flavors, nice, nice roasted barley malt flavors. Uh, you might get some chocolate. You might get some coffee. Heck, you might even get those fruit notes you're talking about. They're talking about personally. I do not. But what I do get is a nice, tasty, very drinkable beer. So there you go. Tried to drink just enough of this so I can come back uh, to the second part of this video. I'm going to do a version of an Irish car bomb. So I'll be back in a minute. I do, Buckaroos, and I'm back. So, I wanted to do kind of an Irish car bomb, and I say kind of. I don't have a Bush Mills or Jameson handy. Uh, I do have some 16 year old Bush that I'm not going to put in here. And I thought about picking up some regular Jameson just for this. I said, no, I'm going to do an American version. So, uh, my apologies to my actual Irish friends, but as an Irish American, I thought I'd do an Irish American version of this drink using a very distinctive American whiskey. So in lieu of, <laughs> in lieu of regular uh, Bush Mills or Jameson, I'm going to make an American version of this using some Jack Daniels. I know some of you are my cringe, but hey, you work with what you got, man. So I also, I've got some, <clears throat> some good Irish cream. Kerrygold Superior Irish Liqueur. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, Buy whichever one you like. Personally, I, I personally I prefer this one to Bailey's, but buy whichever one you like. I had one the other day, uh, and I'm not going to mention the name. Rents thirty dollars a bottle, and quite frankly, it was absolutely brilliant. But I'm not going to pay thirty bucks for an Irish cream. I didn't have that kind of money handy, but I, I did pick up this because this stuff is pretty good. So, anyways, I'm going to make it uh, how you would typically make this drink. Uh, just I'm just going to swap out the whiskey. All right, I'm not chugger, so I'm going to have to go give, give it my best shot. Well, cheers, my American friends, my Irish friends, and everybody that wants to be Irish on St. Patrick's Day. 
as I share some beer and some family thoughts with y'all. Knock a little bit of, of stuff back. So there you go. So this is an ounce and a half glass. So I've got this. I, I, I've got half Irish cream, half Jack Daniels, and here we go. Oh, biscuits. Woo, that's going to leave a mark. Anyways, uh, oh, oh, wow, excuse me. Welcome to St. Patrick's Day at the beer whiskey, beer slash whiskey whisperer house. Hey, using my real name here, the Mulvey Hill family. Thanks, y'all. Uh, y'all have a good one. Have a fun St. Patrick's Day. And, and, you know, listen, I like to drink whiskey and I like to drink beer. I, I made no secret about that. But St. Patrick's Day doesn't have to be just about that. I mean, I mentioned some of the other family traditions we have. Make your own. You don't have to use mine. But again, it could be a it could be a day. It could be a family holiday, and it was or is uh, is for my family. And uh, gosh, uh, I just have so many memories of St. Patrick's Day's over the years. So anyways, thanks a lot. Have a good one. I am Tom Beer Whisper. I'm Tom Whiskey Whisper Beer Evangelist. Uh, whiskey Avenger, prolific beer drinker, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor of wisdom, and all around good guy. Cheers, y'all.